Well, we are beginning a new year, a new decade, and I think that that's big. We want to get off to a good start. I know some of you, maybe many of you, have a New Year's resolution, and I'm certainly rooting for you. Uh, I am in your corner, but you know, a lot of times that's not enough. We know that. Uh, so what, what I want to do is over the next four weeks is lay a foundation of next steps of if we do these, this will really point us in the right direction regarding uh, going into the new year, going into the new year. So let's, we'll talk about that in just a moment. But what I wanted to do was first kind of recap some of the highlights of 2019. So here's some of the things that, not all of them, but just some of the things that we, that we uh, accomplished together as the Vineyard team, the Vineyard family. We have uh, 88 people that went through Growth Track that were added to our dream team. Uh, so that's super exciting. We had uh, 256 people uh, that were involved in our small groups and our Vineyard Network. Uh, serve Day, we had 200 people that served the community in all different, we had eight different projects all over the community, uh, mowing people's lawns, and we did many, many, many homes, and lots and lots of people affected. Uh, food pantry, two bread, we had uh, 14, uh, 4,500 people served uh, in, uh, in, in that benevolence ministry. The, some of the things that happened during the holidays was 200 Christmas gifts to children uh, through our angel tree, 150 Thanksgiving food baskets hand, handed out, uh, blessing all of those families. Back to school backpacks uh, for some uh, low income, two low income uh, schools that we helped support. We gave them 70 book bags filled with school supplies. Oh, in our missions, we had two compassion aid trips to Mexico. And we also raised $3,000 that we were able to give for uh, disaster relief efforts, uh, for hurricane uh, things, those kinds of things. We had 43 people baptized. Commitments to Christ, we had 149 adults, 278 youth. So that's terrific, right? All right. That's sweet. I love it. So I, I don't want to just like move on. You know, I mean, let's take a moment and savor it. God is using us, doing stuff through us, and, uh, and so I'm super excited about that. And you know, I think the best is always yet to come when it comes to God. God is always doing amazing things, and He always wants our focus to be, hey, the present and what God's about to do. And so as we go into 2020, here's some of the things that, that we need in our lives. If, if you're going to take some next steps, here's some things that I think uh, that you can do and I can do, you know, wherever you're at, because we're in different places, next steps. One is, is water baptism. If you've not been water baptized, we have this in January 18th and 19th. After uh, each service, uh, you can sign up as you're, as you're leaving or just mark that a pastoral update care card. Hey, I want more information. We'll be sure to contact you. But some of you have been baptized as maybe as an infant like I was, uh, and I'm thankful that my parents care about me. And, but that's, it's, you know, when we look at the Bible, God wants us to make a decision about that. Jesus got baptized, and he said, hey, if you're going to be a follower of mine, uh, then you need to be baptized. And so we, we do baptisms from time to time, and uh, this would be a next step for some of you if you have not been water baptized. And then growth track. Growth track is, is, our, is a key part of our discipleship system that w we want to help you get closer to God and to grow and, and to do it with a team and discover your purpose. And, and that happens in growth track in, in, in our church. So I invite you to come and be part of that. And today, it's a great time to be part of it because today is the beginning. It's step one. And so it's right after the service. Uh, you say, hey, well, I'm hungry. We, we'll feed you. Well, I got a kid. We'll, we'll watch your child. I have two kids. We'll watch them both. <laughs> and so we're, we want to help you with that. And it's only about uh, 50 minutes right after this service. And, uh, and if you can't make it this, this service, you can obviously uh, do it, uh, jump in at step two. Jump, but step one is the best. And we do step one at the beginning of every month. But that's where we, if you've not done growth track, that's your next step. And then we start, we do this every year. We do 21 days of prayer and fasting. I love this because, you know, coming out of the Christmas season where there's, you know, a fair amount of, you know, indulgence, you know, food and gifts and material stuff. And it's fun, but, you know, it's nice to start out the year 
saying, you know what, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to do some prayer. Now, most of us get the prayer part. It's the fasting stuff that is kind of like, I don't know about that. What's that? Well, let me tell you. Fasting is what we see in the Bible is God's way of telling us, hey, why don't you take something in your life and put it kind of on hold. You go without, thus fast. You don't do that. And, and then... And then seek God in, in this place. So it's kind of like is a, a turbo boost to your prayer. Because we all pray from time to time, right? Like a little, you know, Hail Mary prayer or maybe a grace, you know, over your food. And maybe if you're in a crisis, you pray a little more. Some of you might pray a lot. But, but wherever you're at in your prayer place, when you fast, it like gives it a turbo boost. All of a sudden, you're way more focused. You're way more connected. And so that's why it's, but you know, for most of us, we just can't keep doing that. So we limit it to 21 days, 21 days. So we're asking you starting tomorrow. So you think about it. Some people, they fast media. You know, they're way too involved in um, just TV and the internet or the, you know, social media or uh, all kinds of things you know, associated with media. And they just say for 21 days, I'm not going to, I'm not going to do that. I'm not going to do all the media stuff. I'm going to give that up. The world will be fine without me. Uh, you know, and I'm just going to, and, and in this place, I'm going to seek the Lord. And so that's one. Uh, other people, they, it's not media, it's meals. And meals can be very powerful when you say, okay, I'm going to go without a, a meal, you know, for, you know, breakfast or lunch or whatever, or maybe even two meals or whatever you just pray about it you say god you know what would be you know we last year we did a fast of you couldn't we just said let's not eat unhealthy stuff and so our fast as churchwide fast we just decided we're gonna eat healthy for 21 days and that's that's a fast you're not necessarily hungry but you are hungry because you're hungry for the things that aren't good for you you know i really want that slushy or that cake or donut or whatever you know what I mean just and so we fasted and that was a real positive thing a lot of see what happens is when we put God first in prayer and then we especially when we turbo it with fasting which Jesus by the way fasted and recommends it and the disciples did and and and, and the New Testament writers I mean we just see that's part of what it means to be a New Testament Christian that miracles happen God intervenes and does some amazing things and so I encourage you Join us. Be part of that. Don't get legalistic about it. If you make a mistake, so what? Don't worry about it. You know, don't, well, that's not, that's not life-giving. We, all legalism and stuff. No, no, no. Just, just throw your hat in the ring and join us and do it. And listen, a big part of what we're doing with, fat, with uh, prayer and fasting is for three Saturdays, we're going to come together and we're going to pray and we're going to actually have a very, very cool New Testament prayer meeting. Some of you have never been in a New Testament prayer meeting. So we're going to do this for an hour. Uh, it's amazing. You will love it. We actually have a, a, uh, a miracle prayer, prayer, prayer book. Okay. You read this, you go through this, God's going to start showing up in powerful ways. Okay. Real simple. So no matter where you're at, this, this will help you out. Beautiful book. We've, we just had this designed just for this coming month. So you'll get these when you show up here at the church. Okay, it's actually not called Miracle Prayer Book, but that's what I'm believing for, okay? So that's why I put it in there, okay? There's also coffee and child care. That's important, right? And, uh, and, then, and then if you can't make it, for some reason, I certainly hope you can, but if you can't, we will have it on Facebook Live. Just type in Vineyard VA, and you can, you can worship with us at home. You can worship with us at home. But we're not going to make you stand up and pray or anything. You'll just come and you'll just... Uh, Join us as we pray and we seek God for what he has for us in this next coming decade. So you'll definitely want to be part of that. So I'm super excited about that. So what I want to do now is go into our, uh, our, our this series that's going to lay the groundwork for, I believe, some major, major God intervention in this coming year. And it begins with it begins at the, at the place where it starts, which is knowing God. That's a high priority for us, is that we know God. We know him personally, and, we, and, we, and we're growing in that place of knowing him. The Bible says there, it says, I ask the God of our master, Jesus Christ, the God of glory, to make you intelligent and, that's always, I need that prayer, right? Make you intelligent. You probably didn't know that prayer was in there. You're not feeling too smart. You go, God, make me intelligent. He can do it. And discerning, 
knowing him personally. You know, that word knowing is a word that is, is, describes close, close intimacy. Not just a contact in your cell phone. No, that's, that's somebody you are like related to. I mean, you're, you're, and, and you're close to. Not just related, but you're close. It's often used, that word, in the context of, of marriage. I mean, somebody who's very, very close. You, and he says, God wants to know you. Not just, I know of God or I believe in him. No, this, no and, and notice, it's not just knowing him, but, you're, but know him, but you're knowing him and, it, you're, and it, you're growing in that. Your eyes focused and clear so that you can see exactly what it is he is calling you to do. That's all we, we want to know that. We're pursuing that as a church, each of us. Grasp the immensity of his glorious way of life he has for his followers. So that's, that's a, a, a foundational step going into 2020. That you know God. That you, that you uh, don't take that for granted. You know, just like anybody, people can, can drift apart, right? You've been close to people before and now you're not close. You know, that can happen in your relationship with God. He talks about that in Revelation chapter 3. He says, hey, you know, there was a church. They were close to him at one point. He goes, hey, that's not happening now. So we, each one of us, we want to keep drawing close to God. God, I want to know you. I want to know you better. That's a, an important part, okay? And uh, th then Jesus came to them and said, all authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Okay, so, so once we know him, then we need to follow him. So there's knowing God and then following Christ. And Jesus says, here's what he says. Notice these verbs. Therefore, go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. So here you have a, 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 a key imperative verb, which is make disciples. The others are supporting verbs. They're participles. This could really, you say, well, how could go be? Because it's like in your going, you know, so going, in your going and baptizing and, uh, and then in your teaching. Those are, he says, all of that is about making disciples. And it applies to ourselves that we, we need to be baptized. We need to get into God's word and be taught and teach ourselves and get involved in that. We need to be the people that are going out and, and, and making a difference and, 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 and changing lives and starting with our own, starting with our own. And so this is an important part. He says, you know, I want you to be a disciple. You know what a disciple is? A disciple is simply a learner. So a disciple of Christ is somebody saying, I'm, learn I'm still in the posture of learning. I, I don't know it all. I'm still growing in this area, and so I want to learn how to be a better disciple. So a disciple of Jesus... Uh, first of all, has a growing relationship with God. So we just talked about that. That would be the foundation that we build on, that I have a growing love relationship with God. And then uh, and we call that in the vineyard just knowing God. That's, that's part of our vision, to know God. And then the we part is, is that my relationship with others are getting healthy. In other words, I have a vertical relationship with God, but I also, and Jesus talks a lot about this, that if you want to be good with God, you've got to be good with people this way too. And so we have a horizontal place where we're getting healthy in our relationships. It's not we're just surviving. We're not just, you know, trying to make it through. We're, we're, we're getting healthy. And in the vineyard, we call that finding freedom, to find freedom. In other words, you get to a place where you can, you can be yourself and you can have healthy relationships that when you end up with conflict that you don't let it go underground you deal with it you deal with it biblically all of those things are so important and then the me so you have God and then we and then me what about me well my character needs to be changing I need to be continuing to be more like Christ and I need to discover what I'm here for that's an important spiritual question and everybody asks that question whether they're if they're smart they do they ask why am I here why am I, whether you're a Christ follower or not, why am I here? But see, that's only found when we, when we go to God because he's the one who gave, it assign, uh, gave us an assignment. He's the one who put us here. We call that discovering your purpose. And, 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 we, and we say in, in growth track, that's a big part. We want to partner with you to help you discover your purpose, to get this me part, figure it out, and then the world. So you have God and then you have, you have we and then me and then we also are called to serve others. God sends us to serve, and that's to make a difference. 
it's not about just living about for ourselves. You'll never make a difference if it's just about you. You know, you, people, there's people that amass enormous amounts of wealth. Nobody remembers them. It's people that learn to, to serve others with that wealth or others with their lives. They're the ones that really make a big difference. And so we want to be people uh, that are disciples of Jesus. So I know God, and not only do I know him, and I'm right with him, but I'm good with other people. I'm learning to be relationally healthy. I've discovered my purpose. I know why I'm here on the earth, and I want to make a difference. Okay, so how to help people find Jesus? Because that's an important part of serving others. God, one of the, see, you, and our, my ultimate purpose means that I know God, but I'm also helping other people to know God. And that's helping people find Jesus. So the first thing you do is you need to find somebody you love. You see, the gospel always goes along relational lines because people trust people they know. If you don't know somebody, you don't really trust them, right? And so trust is built up by, by, by somebody you know. And we see this in the Bible. For example, Andrew, Simon Peter's brother, was one of the two who heard what John had said. That's John the Baptist. And who had followed Jesus. The first thing Andrew did was he went and found his brother because he loved his brother. He said, hey, I found the Messiah. I found Jesus. And so the first thing he did is he went and hunted down his brother. Philip went and found his friend. He had a friend, Nathaniel. And so Philip found Jesus and he goes, Nathaniel needs to know about this because he he cared about Nathaniel. That was his friend. Jesus saw a man named Levi, that's Matthew, one of the disciples, uh, at his work collecting taxes. So that's what he was, and collecting taxes in that day. It's probably never a good job, right? Or it's always kind of perceived, you, that's what you do, you take my money. But in that day, it was a lot worse because they set it up in a structure where they said you had to pay a certain amount to the Romans. Anything you collected above that was yours. So a lot of them were corrupt. And so, so it's, they were like the dredges of society. So he's got this, this job that everybody looks down upon, and he, that's his work. But Jesus comes to him and he says, and he says, come along with me. And he did. He walked away from everything and went with him. Levi gave a large dinner at his home for Jesus. Everybody was there. Who's everybody? Well, the, his workmates. They, they were people. I don't know if he was friends with them all, but he worked with them and he knew them. And so he invited him. He said, hey, you scoundrel. I mean, uh, you come on with me. And he, they were tax collectors and other disreputables. Uh, as guests at the dinner. That's who, so he thought, hey, I can't get him into church, but I can have a party and I can invite Jesus there. And so he said, hey, come check it out, man. We're gonna have this awesome party and you'll love to hear from this guy, Jesus. And, uh, but he cared about him. So he brought him. Then the woman left her water jar and went back into the city. That's the city she was from. And so she met Jesus. She goes, and he impacted her and she went back into her community. And so you see these examples of people saying, hey, my, I, my family member needs to know, my friend needs to know, my coworker needs to know, my, my community needs to know, the people I live and my neighbors. And she, they were care, concerned about that. So that's the, certainly finding somebody you love is an indication of a disciple, somebody who's got it. I know God, I want other people to know him, but also tell him what you know. Tell him what you know. And, and people aren't going to know if you don't tell them. They can't read your mind. They wouldn't know any other way. And so, uh, so it's, it, it's upon us to say, not, you don't tell them what you don't know because obviously you don't know that, right? So it's just what you know. The first thing Andrew did was find his brother and tell him, this is what he knew. We have found the Messiah, that is the Christ. So when you, when you, when you find, that's what he knew. He knew that amount, right? And so he told him. Uh, Philip told Nathaniel, we have found the one Moses wrote about in the law and about whom the prophets also wrote, Jesus of Nazareth, the son of Joseph. Joseph. And so, so that's what he knew. He knew a little more. He understood it. He, had, you know, he goes, hey, this is how it fits in. So he told him what he knew. Now the woman says, the woman left her water jar and went back into the city. She told the people, she'd figure this out, come with me and meet a man who told me everything I've ever done. Could he be the Messiah? Because so she, she had this power encounter with Jesus. He kind of read her mail. He knew all about things that he shouldn't be able, to, be able to know about her. And so it impacted her life. And so that's what she shared. She shared that. Now there's a story about a man who was born blind. Jesus healed him. And uh, he didn't 
He didn't understand it all, but here's what he said. Give glory to God by telling the truth. This is the Pharisees were quizzing him. We know this man is a sinner. They're talking about Jesus. But this guy who's, who's born blind, but Jesus healed him, he said this. Whether he is a sinner or not, I don't know. He goes, I don't even know that. But here's what I know. I don't know. But one thing I do know. I was blind, but now I see. And so he just, that, listen, you can tell your story. You don't have to be a defense attorney for God. But you got a story, and it's upon you to share it. You tell it. And, and I love this because this is a great way to think about your story. I was once, and now I'm this. I once had an anger issue, but now God gave me peace in my life. I once was always filled with worry and anxiety, but now I don't have to fear the future anymore. I once was addicted to, this, you know, to some substance, but now God has set me free. I once didn't know my purpose and just wandered around uh, just trying to fill uh, my life with things that didn't matter. Now I have a purpose that drives me. And that's how you think of your story. Hey, I was this, but now I'm this because of what Christ did. And you don't get spinning out of all kinds of dialogues. And see, people can argue with all that stuff. That's, you can't argue with that. And it ended with these Pharisees. They couldn't argue with it anymore. Well, my oh gosh, guy was blind. He sees now. Something's going on, and it's, a, it's, it's, it's for everybody gets, gets, uh, can do that. Then you bring them with you to church. You bring them with you to church. So you invite them. You bring, you be an inviter, and we see that. And he brought him to Jesus. And then it says, Nazareth, can anything good come there? Come there? Nathaniel said, come and see to Philip. He brought him to Jesus. And then come with me. The people left the city in Sychar where the Samaritan woman was and went to meet Jesus. He says, come with me. And then Levi, as I said, he, he, he brings them to Jesus. Now, the presence of Jesus is found in the church. The, the Bible calls the church the body of Christ. In fact, the Bible, Jesus said that wherever, he says, forever two or three come together in my name, there am I. In other words, when we gather together, Jesus is here. When you gather together in your small group, Jesus is there. When we gather together as a dream team, Jesus is there. Jesus is present in there. And so we invite him. Hey, this is what God's doing. God's up to something in the world. And we need to, we need to say, hey, not only find him, we, we tell him, and then we bring them. So how do we help people find Jesus? We those three things, find, tell, bring. And then how do we help people? Follow Jesus. So that's another part. This is something that we also are working on. How can I be a follower? Because God calls us to be a follower. So, I mean, it's, it's great when somebody puts their faith in Christ, says, yes, I, I recognize I have sinned and that Christ died on the cross for me. And so when I put my faith in Christ, that is enough for me to be covered and I, before God, it's, it, my sin has been, been taken care of by Jesus. And so I'm, I'm good before God. And I can be assured I'm going to go to heaven. But you know what? That's not, that's great. That's amazing. But God calls us to something bigger than that. He says, I also want you to follow Christ. Jesus says, it's important that you follow. He says, and, and teaching them to obey everything I've commanded you. And so part of it is this. I, I, I want to follow what God says, not out of some sense of uh, God doesn't call us to be more religious. He wants us to have a life-giving relationship with him. And so I, we, we follow God because of our love for him and what he's done for us. My purpose is to give them, Jesus said, a rich and satisfying life. God wants to give you a rich and satisfying life. Now, in the vineyard, we have a we have a way of going about it. In other words, here's the steps to step into this place where you're, where you're following what God has for you. And, and, and before, you know, sometimes we beat ourselves up. Well, you know, I'm not that great of a Christian. I'm, you know, I'm not doing that good. But we don't want to be too hard on ourselves because God, God's not done with you yet. And so you're, you're, our job, your job, my job, in discipleship and following Christ, here it is, ready? You're following Jesus. You're walking in his footsteps. Here's your next step. Here's your next thing you do. You take your next step. Everybody's got a next step. Here's some next steps. One is uh, our vineyard discipleship process. First step, 
It's about God. In other words, getting involved in church, saying, hey, I want to be part of this. And a big part of that's in weekend services. Weekend services is where God, you know, where we connect with God. We learn to worship to God. We learn to be generous. We learn to, to, uh, to, to study and, and, and under teaching. And we're connecting with the Lord. And he says, be careful that you don't, that's a habit that you grow in. And if you want that, if you want to be a disciple of Christ, you need that habit in your life. He says, let us not give up the habit of meeting together, as some, are, as some tend to do. Instead, let us encourage one another for the day, for all the more, for the, since, uh, since you see the day of the Lord is coming. Okay, so that's one step. Then the next step is small groups. So I talked about it, God, and then we, and for some of you, you need to be in a small group. You need to be in a small group. Our spring semester begins at the uh, beginning of next month, February 1st and 2nd. So you can be thinking about that, praying about it. Uh, say, God, help me. Some of you just say, I don't know. I feel weird in a small group. Well, get over it. You need, to, you, need to get, you need to get involved in that. It says all the believers met together constantly and shared everything with each other. You need to be in a small group. Here's the secret sauce of a small group. Get in a small group where you can share where you can be yourself, where you can take off your mask, where you can say, this is really me. And you can share some things that, that are, you know, are painful. Maybe you, know, you have to be a little vulnerable, but there's a trust there. So people can support you, pray for you, care for you. It's, a, it's, it's very, very powerful. And, uh, and so the, in the New Testament, they knew that. They said, hey, be in a place where you can share with one another. Then growth track. And step one, did I mention that's today? <laughs> step one, right after the service. I mean, that's a great place to just step in. Say, hey, I want to discover my purpose. I want to start figuring that out. I want to grow in that area. And then dream team. In other words, we are called to serve. God calls you to be part of that. And he wants you to be part of a team where you're serving. Okay? Now, uh, there is a world expert on this, these things that I've been talking about tonight. About coming close to God, finding freedom, Discovering your purpose, making a difference. He's in demand all over the world. And he's been working on a book for several years. It just came out a few months ago. And so his name's Chris Hodges. He'll actually be speaking at our regional conference this coming, uh, uh, the end of uh, June, June 30th, and then July 1st. And he's actually speaking June, J- June 30th, that Tuesday. And so I hope you'll come and be part of it. But he's a world-class expert. And, uh, and he just wrote a book. I want you to, here's just a one minute video about his book. Watch this. Have you ever taken a trip to visit a city that you've never been to before and tried to explore the new city all on your own? Well, then you've probably had this nagging feeling that there was more to see and more to do than what you were experiencing simply because you didn't know it was there to see. But what if you had a tour guide, someone who had been there before to show you all the special places and even some of the hidden sites that most people never find? Well, God wants to take us on a spiritual journey, but most people simply don't know what's next. In my new book, I'll simply be the tour guide to show you the specific steps that God has designed for you to take. There are all throughout the Bible, said many different kinds of ways all throughout Scripture. This is the spiritual journey, and we all have another step to take. Steps that will get us unstuck from the place we've been for way too long. Steps that will help us live a life of meaning beyond ourselves, a life that God always intended. A life filled with passion and adventure. Are you ready? Let's go. So, I was so excited about that. Uh, we reached out to him and, and asked for him to autograph one of his new books. Because otherwise, you know, he lives in Alabama. He actually pastors the second largest church in America. And so that would have been, you know, a diff- so I just said, hey, could you... Uh, could you autograph one of your books? And I'd love to give it to one of the people in our church. So this is an autographed, uh, uh, autographed book by Chris Hodges. And uh, I think it's going to be amazing. Who wants, who wants this book? Okay, come on up here. Come on up. There we go. All right. 
<laughs> there you go. Thank you. You're welcome. It's an incredible book. And you've got an autograph signed one. But you know what? I Wouldn't it be cool if you guys all had one? Yeah, so you know what? I orchestrated that. Uh, they're not all autographed, but I want you to each of you have a book. So come on out. Give, give out the books. <laughs> Reading is fun. Reading is fun. <laughs> This is going to change your life. It's amazing. I've read the book. It's phenomenal. I'm reading it a second time. Everybody gets a book. All right. All right. Okay. So listen. Here's the deal. This goes along with the series where we're talking about what's next in the next decade. Next steps. This goes along. I've actually pulled a lot of my notes from this book. So as you read it, you're going to be going along with everybody else. Okay? And you're going to have extra time, right? Because you're fasting, right? You're, you're, you're going to, you're either for media or, me, or meals or whatever. And so, by, by, by the way, I'm fasting from caffeine. I, re, I was really praying about it. And I'm thinking, and I'm, I'm, I'm at an unhealthy level. So uh, if you bump into me in the next week, I'll probably be grumpy. So don't take it personally. I'm just going through crazy withdrawals. And you can pray for me, I guess. But, but you're going to have extra time. Now here's, so I did a little, I, 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 here's my experiment. What I did was I read it uh, and slowly out loud. And what I discovered is you can read a page in one minute out loud. Now, some of you read faster than that if you, you know, read, you can read quicker even to yourself. But if you read just slowly out loud, you can read seven pages in a day. And it'll take you seven minutes. Okay, so between six and eight is what I found. So what I'm asking you to do is read the first three chapters between now and next week. You're going, whoa, man, hey, homework. Yeah, it's homework. But we're doing it together. And it's really more than homework, right? Because homework, we kind of associate that with busy work that we didn't really want to do. This is helping us to set our future, okay? And this is going to lay down the groundwork of our next steps forward. And we're going to do it together. So that's what I'm asking you to do. I tried to create it so it's real, real easy to do. As you can see, if you open it up, it's the, the pages are not very long. They're easy to read. And, and it will really, really change your life. So I'm super excited about it. Let's pray and we'll close and worship, okay? Would you bow your heads with me and let's pray. Father, thank you, Lord, that you are the author and the finisher of this race. Help us, Lord, to stay focused on you. Lord, I pray that we would come to know you and know you personally. If you don't know God, if you're here and you're saying, I don't really know him that well. I mean, you were talking about that, but you know, God, he... He loves you and he knows you. And he wants to have that relationship with you. He longs for it even more than you do. And so don't go into this new year far from God, unsure. Make that commitment and that prayer right now, right where you're at. I'm not going to ask you to come forward. I'm not going to ask you to stand up. I'm just going to ask you right where you're at. Just say to God, God, today is my day. Would you do that? Say, God, today I want you. I need you, Lord. This is not about joining our church. This is about joining Jesus. Saying, God, I want to know you and I want to follow you. And it might get messy, but that's okay. Say, God, I'm not going to get legalistic about this, but I, I want to follow you because I love you. You say, God, forgive me for trying to do things in my own efforts. Forgive me for my sin. Thank you for dying on the cross for me. And we pray this in Jesus' name. Amen.